Hi, I'm Chandler here with another episode of Eat Like a Chef. Today we're at the Gilded Unicorn, a super groovy spot downtown. It's under the Montvale Hotel. So we're gonna head downstairs, meet up with Chef Mary for a special recipe. Chandler, welcome to the Gilded Unicorn. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm Mary, I'm the executive chef. Um, and today we're gonna to be working through a pea salad. Awesome, and how long have you been here? About three years. Okay, well I'm super excited to see what you make. We're back in the kitchen with Chef Mary. She's gonna show us how to make this awesome pea salad. One cool thing that I wanted to note is this kitchen space. So this is right in the center of the restaurant. There's some booths over here, lots of tables over here. So you can kind of dine while watching them prepare some of the food, which is really cool. So what kind of things do you make in this part of the kitchen? Cause you have two, right? Yeah, um, so in this part of the kitchen, a lot of our heavier entrees come out. So like our pork chop, for example, is made up here, our burger, our Northwest salmon. Um, a lot of those staple items, and we actually do some desserts up here as well. Oh. Um, currently, we do a apple pie skillet that's topped with a walnut honey crisp and uh, brown butter ice cream that also comes out of this oven up front. Yum. So it's very um, universal. It's a big staple for the Okay. Year. And your bars are right here? Yep. And you actually cook right here? Yep. We cook everything just right up on this fire. Like, it's, it's a super unique kitchen compared to a lot of other ones at Spokane. Awesome. And what's the difference between cooking on a fire like this or in an oven? Um, you get a lot of a different flavor profile, in my opinion, because you have all your proteins right next to that flame, as opposed to just cooking something on a stovetop and pan searing it. It's a very different flavor profile. Cool. I love that. Well, okay. let's get going. Um, so today we're going to make our pea salad. Um, we're going to make the base from scratch. It's super simple. So we usually start with a little bit of mayonnaise, about six tablespoons. And to that, we add a quarter cup of sour cream. Okay. You know it's good when there's mayonnaise and sour cream in a recipe, right? Oh, of course, you need that tang. It, yeah. it builds so much. Um, from there, we add the rest of our wet. So we add a little bit of heavy cream, as well as a dash of hot sauce and some lemon juice. And we usually give that a good quick mix just to get all of the wet nice and incorporated before we start adding our dry ingredients. Okay, and while you're stirring that, so you said you've been here for three years. Where were you before that? Prior to this, I worked with uh, Adam out at the Coeur d'Alene Casino. Um, I worked at the Red Tail for about seven years. Oh, wow. Um, I started there as a prep cook and then worked my way up to a lead line cook, and then I came out to Gilded. Amazing. You look too young to have been cooking that long. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been at it for a very long time. I started as, at a restaurant as a kid, and I've always just kind of been at it since then. So you've just always loved it. Oh, yeah. My parents owned a restaurant growing up, and then oh. I worked at... Um, a bakery for a few years, Sweetwater Bakery, uh, the Falls Club, um, all over town, really. Cool. So yeah. you're experienced. I like yeah, that. Of course. <laughs> um, so from there, we start adding our dries into our base. So we add a little bit of parsley, a little bit of green onions. And you said those green onions are local, right? Yep. Uh, we try to get as much product in locally as possible. We work really closely with Link uh, Produce. Okay. Um, so we get especially like a lot of our squashes, apples. Anything that we can source locally, we really try to do that to sustain our local farmers and economy. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and then from that point, we add a little bit of uh, two-year-age Tillamook white cheddar cheese. It Yum. is awesome. I buy it by the block at home. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you shred, you just shred that? Yep, we okay. shred it all by hand. Okay. Um, and then we add a little bit of toasted sunflower seeds and some salt and pepper to taste. And that's essentially the entire base for the pea salad. Okay. What's your favorite recipe here? Is it this or? Uh, my personal favorite is probably the Magic Mac. Um, oh. So we make our own uh, Gouda Mac base in house. And to that, we add a pimento cream cheese. And oh then gosh. with uh, the kava toppy noodles, we add in a little bit of our braised brisket that we braise in this oven up front every night and a bunch of beer. And I mean, oh my God, it's awesome. What? Um, and then we also add in jalapenos and a little bit of extra white cheddar and green onions and bake it all off and it's it is a phenomenal dish it's yum so maybe we can try that later oh yeah <laughs> next time <laughs> next time yeah 
Uh, to finish this off, all that we do is add in our peas. Are those canned peas, frozen, does it matter? Uh, these are actually blanched peas that we do use, uh, use in house. Okay. Um, but I mean, really with this base being as good as it is, you can kind of add anything into it. Okay. So we give it a nice good mix till it's all the way nice and incorporated uh -huh. with uh, the trademark gilded gold spoons because we I try to make that. everything gold here. Oh. Even our burger buns, we're very serious about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then to finish this off, we just top it with some bacon because yes. you can't go wrong. Always, just regular bacon? Is it candied, just crispy um, bacon? Yeah, it's crispy applewood smoked bacon. Okay. It's phenomenal. And then we do a little bit of extra white cheddar because you can't go wrong with yes. Tillamook white cheddar. It's excellent. Tiny bit of green onions and some sunflower seeds. That's Yum. It. So you get a little crunch in there, a little sweet, a little savory, salty, oh, yeah. everything. It's an excellent balance. Like it's so good. And it doesn't matter if it's winter or summer. I mean, it's, it's exactly what you want. <laughs> cool. I can't wait to try it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, are you ready to try it? Yes, beautiful, thank you. That was such an easy recipe. That's something that you could easily just whip up at home pretty quickly. So I'm excited to dig in, my favorite part. After the commercial break on Eat Like a Chef, we'll be joined by Chef Adam Hegstead and local guest Rob Holman from Victory Media. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? I heard you were cooking. Oh man, I'm making a Thai chicken noodle soup. That sounds real good. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're gonna make our quick and dirty curry first. Okay. Okay, so we'll start with a little bit of fresh basil leaves, some jalapeno, hope you like it spicy. Why do you call it dirty curry? Quick and dirty. Quick and dirty, yeah. Instead of using a mortar and pestle, we're just gonna throw it all in the blender, blend okay. it up. Okay, Got it. okay, a little bit of, this is coriander seed. That's lemongrass. A little bit of onion. Are these all traditional Thai ingredients? Uh, well, there's a little mix of what we can get available here. So okay. um, we do have some traditional Thai ingredients, but really what we do is like we take ingredients that are locally available, and then we're able to make those into um, an authentic style of recipe, but with ingredients from here. Sure. So, yeah. Well, it's super important that everything's fresh for you. Well, and really, I mean, we can go and you can get anything at any time if you have you know, enough money, you can have it imported. But we'll, sure. what we like to do is go to local farmers and have those farmers be able to produce the goods for us. Yeah, right. Okay, a little garlic. Yeah, okay. A little bit of fresh ginger, grated ginger, a little bit of cilantro. This is coconut milk. Okay. Obviously fresh. That's Obviously. And a little bit of fresh lime juice, a tiny bit of salt. Now, how do you measure that? You wouldn't even say a tiny bit. I would say that's probably a uh, teaspoon of salt. Okay. Okay, a little bit of, this is palm sugar. Mm -hmm. This is obviously not something local, but it's a uh, sugar that's um, a little bit of a heart, comes as a heart puck and we kind of break it up a little bit. Okay. Okay, well, this that's is probably organic stuff. Too, yeah, right? of course. Yeah. This is fish sauce, so this is okay. a, a traditional fish Quite sauce. a smell on that. It's very pungent, and it gives it gives a real good kick, uh, savory kick to the curry. Okay. Okay, and then a little bit of fish stock. Mm -hmm. and, and then and the fish stock. Fish stock. So, fish stock is the bones of the fish. Okay. Any kind of uh, piece of meat scrap or anything like that. And then we add a little bit of onions, carrots. Um, let that simmer for about two to four hours, and then we chill it down, and then that's where we use for the curry. You make your own, but somebody could get that on the you could get grocery it. You store. can get it at the grocery store. Yeah, okay. or you can use clam uh, clam juice, anything okay. like that. Okay, so now instead of, usually we use a mortar and pestle, kind mm -hmm. of grind up all the spices and things, but like I said, we want to get this done quickly so we can have our soup to eat, because I'm starting. Yeah, I'm, I'm hungry. hungry. That's okay. why I'm here, Adam. <laughs> That's too I'm here for the soup. <laughs> all right. Look at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I hope everybody at home got that. <laughs> that was a really important tip. That was very important. <laughs> Here, you want to give it a try? And this so, is this so is, this is what we can you can cook um, any kind of uh, seafood, any kind of 
Um, we'll put a lot of vegetables mm. in there and simmer it, serve it with some rice. But it's just a very oh, wow. strong pungent, mm. um, but bright. Yeah. Yeah. Floral kind of. Yeah. yeah. Aromatic. pops there. Yeah. yeah. So now we're gonna cook the soup. Okay. Just put a little heat on the pan. Do you like cooking on gas? I do like cooking on gas. Yeah. It's a little. It's a lot hotter. Yep. Uh, we'll add a little oil. I'm gonna let you add some stuff here. Oh, uh, so I get to do some cooking. You get to do some cooking. I love it. All right. Now we're cooking with just, gas. Just try your best not to mess this up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so. I heard this is so easy that even I can do it, Adam. <laughs> even Rob can do it. Okay, so we're gonna add our bell peppers. This is chopped jalapeno. Um, this is delicata squash. This is okay. in season, so we wanted to have a, oh, a yeah. seasonal vegetable in here. So go ahead and just add that to our. Or just it, throw them in just there. Just throw yeah. them in there. No, just these three. Just these three? Yeah. The three front ones, right? Into the oil. Half of, half, yep. Half yep. or all of it? All of that, go ahead. All of this, half of those onions I put <laughs> yeah, the whole thing in? onions. No, we're so good. So half the onions <laughs> that I just put in there. No, we're fine. Half of this? Little, what? All of that. put half in there, Adam, when... I was gonna garnish with the rest, but... Oh, I didn't know it's that. Fine. It's fine, uh, They're gonna, it's fonda taste the you same. You made it harder than it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's, it's gonna taste the same. Okay, delicata squash. And then we'll just go ahead and stir this around a little bit. Or actually, it should be the pro. Don't, don't, uh... Adam, move over here. Let an expert <laughs> yeah, yeah, do yeah. this. Let the pro stir. This is okay. exactly how it's done. Now a little bit of green bell peppers. Okay, you probably should be the one putting the ingredients. No, I, no that's fine. I can that's move fine. the spoon. <laughs> okay, we got some roasted chicken. Oh yeah. So did you pre-roast that? I did. So that's just a little bit of chicken thigh. Use chicken thigh as opposed to chicken breast. It's gonna stay a little more moist and it's really gonna blend into the soup a lot better. Mm. Where chicken breast will get a little bit dry. Gotcha. Because it's uh, leaner. Yeah. And then a little cilantro. Now, here's our blended curry. Okay. Oh, you can smell that. It smells yeah. so good. And then we're just going to add, we have some uh, fresh noodles here. So we're going to okay. add those right in. So basically, you'll be able to get all the things that are in this. You'll, you'll get the chicken, the delicata squash, the fresh noodles, all of the items for the curry, the peppers. It'll all come to your house. And then you can cook with us, cook along with us weekends on Box 28, and be able to have this at your house, in your own home, feed it to your family in, you know, five to eight minutes. And look like I really know what I'm doing. And look exactly, <laughs> and they'll be very impressed. They, they will be impressed with this. And what inspired you to want to get this food to people? Well, really, um, the, the food that's inspired me is, is, is we kind of work with a lot of local farmers and producers, and we want to be able to share their quality ingredients with other people. And, and to be able to tell, tell the story of our restaurants and tell the story of you know, some of the things that we've experienced mm -hmm. through the food. So we combine our recipes with this great product sure. to make these delicious recipes. Yeah, All man, right. I love this. So how long do I simmer? Oh, about two to three minutes. Really, okay. all we're trying to do is get those noodles softened up. They're fresh okay. noodles, so they don't take okay. very long. Okay. And instead of cooking them in water, we're cooking them in the broth. And mm -hmm. so that'll they'll absorb the flavor instead of just having, you know, cooking them in salted water or something like sure. that. Sure. They'll really soak it all together. I think we're just about there. Okay. That looks pretty good. I've been rotating. The, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I. No, you're doing like a fantastic I'm, job. Okay. We're gonna eat this right now. <laughs> we're gonna plate it up, but then we're gonna eat it. So we have our beautiful noodles, beautiful fresh noodles. Just put a little bit of these chicken, chicken peppers on top. Mm. Let's well, give it a whirl. That is amazing looking. Um, Adam, Go thanks ahead. a lot. Before I, I want to get my gratitude out before I actually taste it in case it's not very good. <laughs> no, I, I, they're, they're big old noodles. Try a little bit of that. Mm. Wow. That's good. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you again. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you helping me cook this. I need to thank you, man. That's well worth the hour of my life. <laughs> Coming up next, I'll be cooking with Chef Mary here at Gilded Unicorn on Eat Like a Chef TV. It's time for our pro tip of the week from Eat Like a Chef. We're gonna be dicing an onion. Seems like a pretty easy task, but to get it done nice, you have to have a little bit of skill. So we're gonna go and cut the ends off and just do a small slit to peel the onion. OK, 
Okay, so the onion's peeled. Let's get that out of the way in half. You can leave a little more of the root on if you like. Um, go to the root end is kind of the end I want to stay. I don't want to cut that yet. So I'm going to cut some small, depending on what you're looking for, but I'm just going to do a kind of a medium dice here, even all the way across. And the way the onion is built, it's built like a rainbow. So every cut has to be cut towards the center so that we have even pieces. Okay. And then I'm going to go for about, you know, kind of the same distance I have between the onions. So just a small slice here. And what kind of knife do you typically use? Oh, uh, this is a French knife. I use a French knife for almost everything. Okay. Um, and it's just a typical knife uh, that you would have in your kitchen. So then I have all the pieces are about the same width there. So, you know, about that yeah. half inch or so. And then I'll do another half inch on this way. So what that does is create small half inch pieces. Beautiful. So you have like really even pieces for cooking. And then when you get to the end here, you can just kind of rough chop it up that same, the same distance apart. It's like, you know That's what it. you're doing. <laughs> wow. <Almost. laughs> Welcome back to Eat Like a Chef. I'm here with Chef Mary at the Gilded Unicorn. We're in the historic Montvale Hotel in the bottom of the hotel in the old boiler room. And we're gonna make a honey brine pork chop. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the brine here. So we have a little bit of peppercorns. This is a classic brine that we use at a lot of our restaurants. A little bit of sugar, a little bit of honey. This is a local honey that we're using here. Quite a bit of salt. Just a little bit of cinnamon. We'll use cinnamon sticks sometimes as well. A little bit of mustard seeds. Some clove. And some bay leaf. And then I'm going to add hot water. This is uh, water that was previously boiling. And what we're doing here is we're going to dissolve the sugar and the honey and really open up the spices, the kind of the seasoning in the spices. Mary runs the day-to-day -day here, so she's pretty used to making this recipe. We have a pork chop on the menu, and it's uh, pretty popular. Okay, we'll let this sit for a couple minutes. Uh, I'm gonna add my, my uh, sprigs of thyme, and then we'll just finish it with a little bit of cold water. What this will do is help chill it down a little bit for the pork chop. We don't want that much of a temperature change since we have such hot water. And usually we'll just let this sit uh, in the refrigerator for a couple minutes, just to cool it down a little more. Um, if you're gonna be letting this brine for longer than uh, really four or six hours, you wanna add a touch more water to it so that the pork chop doesn't get too salty. Okay, we'll let this cool in the refrigerator. Magically cool down. Here we are, we have our chilled, chilled brine. Now we're just gonna add a pork chop to it and you just wanna make sure that pork chop's covered, the brine. Um, and let's go ahead and use this plate and kind of keep a weight on it. We'll let this marinate for four to 24 hours, uh, and then we'll roast it in the oven. Now the pork chop is brined for a little bit. We're going to go ahead and pull it out. And we're gonna take it and dry it out on a paper towel so we can get a nice sear on it before we drop it on our cast iron. So we'll season our cast iron a little bit with oil before we drop our pork chop. We let that preheat a tiny bit. Uh, we use a seasoned cast iron. It's very important to season your cast iron after every use. Um, as you can, you can hear the sizzle kind of happening there, but we use a little bit of salt and oil. Uh, after the cast iron's been heated up and cleaned, after it's been cleaned, we let it heat up. Uh, we add a little bit of uh, kosher salt and a little bit of oil and we rub that into. Uh, flaxseed oil also works really well, um, but over time it'll get a very non-stick uh, surface and that really helps quite a bit. We're using our uh, Hearthstone oven here, but you can use a natural oven as well. Just a regular home oven works just as good, as long as you're letting that cast iron heat up. We're cooking that at about 450 degrees until 145 to 155 degrees, uh, depending on your desired temperature. Okay, the pork chop's been cooking for about two or three minutes. We're gonna go ahead and flip it over. Uh, we got a very nice sear on that. And then we're gonna add a little bit of uh, baby kale uh, to go with the pork chop as well. Just add it right in with the cast iron. Uh, a little bit of, maybe a little bit of kosher salt on that. Really simple seasoning, a little bit of oil. It's a really easy side dish. Uh, we'll be serving this with the maple mustard as well, which Mary will throw together as this cooks. A little bit of whole grain mustard and a little bit of maple syrup. She's gonna mix those two together. Very simple recipe. It's a little bit of sweet, a little bit of savory, a very pungent mustard flavor. 
Um, it goes really well with the pork chop, kind of breaks up a little bit of the fat, adds a little bit of acidity. Our, our pork chop's been cooking for about uh, four to five minutes. Uh, we're gonna take it from the oven uh, and let it rest on this plate for a minute. What that does is kind of help uh, get the natural juices back into the meat. Um, what happens when you're cooking is the heat uh, naturally makes the juices kind of go to the center. What we want to do is let that meat relax a little bit and let the juices go back out. So while that's resting, I'm going to go ahead and start plating. We have a little bit of our, our roasted baby kale here. And then a little bit of our maple mustard. Oh, that looks beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's like you know what you're doing or something. Yeah, I've only worked here for a minute. <laughs> Shit. Okay, just kind of like that. All right, beautiful. that looks beautiful. And then just want to finish a little bit of salt? Yeah, of course. There we go. Honey brine pork chop with, with roasted kale and maple mustard. And we'll just finish it with a little bit of maple syrup. And here we are. Yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It was so fun cooking with y'all and this smells amazing. We're going to dig in. Don't forget to tune in next weekend on Fox 28 for another episode of Eat Like a Chef. We'll be cooking three more recipes that you can try at home. All right, let's do this. Great job, Mary. This Thank looks you. beautiful. Don't mind me. Oh gosh. We're just going it's fine. all in. You can have a giant slice. I won't judge. We'll I'll, cut, I'll cut a smaller one, but all right. Ready? Oh, that was cooked so good. Wow. That's delicious. This would be a staple at home for sure. It's so easy too. And Coming quick. from you? <laughs> I don't know if I believe you, but. <laughs> you saw it. <laughs>